So a pretty common question for people when they come in is, I'm selling my business or buying my business. And what's the difference between an asset purchase or a stock purchase? So I want to go over just a little bit of some of the differences. So typically this comes up in merger and acquisition transactions. So somebody's buying a business, they're selling a business, and the three most common ways to structure the transaction are going to be an asset purchase or a stock purchase or a merger. Typically you'll see an asset purchase or a stock purchase. Um, the merger is a little bit more complex and it's for certain specific type of situations. So what is an asset purchase? Basically, when someone wants to buy a business, they come in and just like it says, they buy just the assets that they choose of that business. So that could be all of the assets or, you know, just certain assets, the intellectual property or the inventory um, or everything. And so that's an asset purchase where you just buy specific assets from the entity. So it could be a corporation. You're just buying the assets of that corporation and leaving the corporation alone. A stock purchase is where you go in and you buy the actual whole company, you buy the corporation, buy all the outstanding shares of stock or however it's structured. Um, it could be an LLC, all the membership interests or units, and you're going in and purchasing all of that. So you're basically buying the actual entity itself. Um, so versus you're just buying certain assets, so you're buying the entire company and everything that comes along with it in that legal entity, corporation or LLC or limited partnership. So some of the issues that come up that uh, basically you need to think about when deciding whether you wanna do an asset purchase or a stock purchase, a lot of times it's depending on what side you're on, if you're the seller or the buyer, typically uh, the seller is gonna to wanna to sell everything, the entire corporation. Uh, and everything along with it, just because then they're done. They've sold the entire company, assets, liabilities, contracts, whatever it is that were part of that corporation are no longer theirs. It's a new owner and they take over from there. An asset purchase uh, is more favored from the buyer side because they can choose, they have control over what assets they're getting and they don't have to assume any unknown liabilities of the company. So if there's any debts, the corporation owes money, uh, there's potential lawsuits against the corporation. In an asset purchase, they don't necessarily have to worry about that. So the issues are, okay, do we want all of the assets? Do we want some of the assets? If you only want some of the assets, you really can't do a corporate uh, stock purchase in most cases. Um, so do you want all the assets or just part of the assets? What are the liabilities, both known, like on their balance sheet, they might have some debt or loans that you know about, but are there unknown liabilities that you're taking on? So in an asset purchase, you can agree to take on certain liabilities. So if there's a car that's owned by the company, you can buy the car and assume or take over the loan on the car if there's a loan. But, you know, there's basically in an asset purchase, you're only agreeing to certain liabilities and not all. In a stock purchase, you try to draft the agreement so that your client is covered, but there are still the issues of, is there any unknown liabilities that this corporation has? Any future claims? Uh, one of the most common ones is employees or vendors that might come after the company for some whatever reason. Um, so that's a future issue that the buyer would have to take over if they do a stock purchase. Taxes, a lot of times to structure a transaction properly, we'll look at the existing structure of the business and the, both the buyer and seller structure and determine what are the tax consequences of an asset purchase versus a stock purchase. Uh, stock purchase is usually just buying all the stock. So there's capital gains to the seller or the shareholders, basically, of that corporation. Um, an asset purchase, you can allocate the purchase price to specific assets. Um, you have a little bit more flexibility on how it's taxed, but there are elections that you can do 
to, for example, elect for a stock purchase to be treated as an asset acquisition. Um, so it gets a little complicated, but tax is a major issue to think about. Contracts, and that can be existing contracts that have things like a change in control provision that says that if this corporation changes hands, there's new owners, then it triggers certain things to take an effect under those contracts. So we look at all contracts, see what the terms are. Can they be assigned? So if it's a valuable vendor contract and the buyer wants to do an asset purchase, then in order to get the benefits of that contract, because it's only with between the corporation and the seller, so the buyer has to have that contract assigned to them. And will that contract, does it allow you to do that? And also leases, that's pretty common. You basically need to figure out, okay, if there's a lease for office space, does it allow you to assign it to the new owner or what exactly is gonna happen with that? Employees uh, in a stock purchase, a lot of times your existing employees stay as is, whether there's benefit plans or anything else in place, they stay as is and the buyer has to figure out what to do with the existing employees and any potential liabilities like wrongful termination if they get rid of a bunch of people uh, versus an asset purchase, they can basically hire away some of the employees of the seller, and that's usually negotiated in some of the contracts during the, uh, basically during the purchase stage. If there's any licensing or regulatory issues, so for example, if the seller holds a specific license to do business, that could be like an alcohol license uh, for a location, those may not be able to be transferred to an owner, um, or they could have change in control provisions, so we have to look at any licensing or regulatory issues that could come up from whether it's an asset sale or a stock sale to make sure that they're covered. And consents, uh, like I mentioned, the lease, you may need consent of the landlord to assign the lease or other contracts uh, to transfer to the new buyer. The corporate consents, uh, essentially, if you're selling all the stock of the corporation, if you've got minority shareholders uh, that own two shares, you may or may not need their vote or an agreement uh, to go forward with the transaction. Versus an asset sale, you may not need those same levels of consent to sell off like part of your assets of the company. The board of directors may be able to just approve that. So you have to look at what corporate consents are required. Uh, for both the buyer and the seller. Typically, it's more of an issue on the seller to make sure it's structured properly. This is just a handful of some of the issues that come up when looking at whether to do an asset purchase or a stock purchase. Again, buyers usually like to do asset purchases. Sellers prefer to do uh, stock or ownership interest purchases uh, because they're a little bit more free and clear of the prior company. But a lot of issues come into play, so these are all things that we go over with our clients.